Hi everyone, Ryan with Perforce here. And today we're gonna to go over Helix Dam, which is our digital asset management tool that you can use in conjunction with your existing Helix core server to have an unprecedented view into your current assets. This allows for you to check on the status of currently running uh, productions, as well as organize assets for later search and reuse easily. So one of the typical use cases and ways that Helix Dam can help your team out is to give you that live view into your running projects. So team members that may not be as comfortable jumping into engine or specific DCCs to review assets can still jump to a web browser to view thumbnails, previews, and in the case of certain 3D assets, view those in browser by tumbling around them and seeing what's available. Other use cases where I see Helix Dam used quite often have to do with creating a digital backlot of assets. If you have a certain set of props or various set dressings that get used in many projects within your studio, you can set those up into a specific depot and use Helix Core's search abilities to quickly find those assets to copy into other projects. Another use case where Helix Dam really shines has to do with the archival process that usually comes along when a project is finished, but you're still looking to keep assets around for marketing purposes. You can copy those assets into a separate project and then archive your actual production. So that way those specific assets can still be used later on when needed. And one final note on how Helix Dam can be used to help studios integrate folks into their revision control system has to do with team members who may not be comfortable in P4V or using the command line client to pull a workspace and get working. You can set a user up with Helix Core and Helix Dam, and they'll still be able to access your revision control through the web, whether that is downloading assets, uploading new assets, or overall just making changes, whether they're contract workers, just downloading specific assets to make changes to and push back up directly through the web interface, or to use as a delivery and review mechanism where you've set up an account for an external user to come in and download assets directly from your Helix Core repository for that final delivery purpose. So once we log into Helix Dam, on the first page here, what we're gonna see is a view of all of our recent assets that have been uploaded to your Helix Core server that you have permission to view so if you're trying to find assets to reuse in other projects, you can always hop up to the search bar. We can quickly find all of our chair assets that we may have available to us to copy and move into other projects. Beyond just simple text search, we can also open up the filter here if you're trying to search specific projects, collections, by tag, author, or asset types, as well as if you're looking for specific size assets, or from a specific date range, if you happen to know that. So one thing to know about this search view is that all of these preview images and thumbnails are all generated by Helix Dam automatically. It'll go through and index your Helix Core library, finding anything that it can generate an automatic preview for, and putting those in place for later search and viewing in this web view. This list includes many of the common image formats you would use either for outputs or textures, animated MOV style files, audio files, as well as many 3D formats. Now, beyond searching, if you know your project's hierarchy and want to have an overview of the entire project and traverse that, you can do so by going to the Projects tab. Now, in here, you can either filter by all projects that you're allowed to see on your Helix Core library based on your permissions, or you can also jump to the projects that you are specifically added to as a team member in Helix Dam. If I were to jump into my demo interior project, from here, we can also see our various collections that are built. When using Helix Dam, you can either create projects directly through the interface as well as collections, or you can tie those into existing projects that you already have on your Helix Core server. If you let it automatically create everything, projects are going to roughly translate to depots where it will create a new streams depot for each project. And then each collection will be a new mainline stream where you can start to add your project structure and your assets. If you already have existing projects in Helix Core and you're not looking for it to automatically create new ones for you, you can turn off that automatic creation and connect your existing either streams or classic depots into Helix Dam, which will be displayed in your project as expected here with the collections. So from here, if we jump into our library collection, we can see we've got a few assets. And if we jump into our rendered image here, we can talk a bit about what you can do on the collaboration portion of Helix Dam. So from our view here, we can see we already have a few assets in our collection. Now you may notice that all of these files present here have preview images and thumbnails attached. But I do wanna point out there are a few files in here that do not automatically generate. 
such as this 3D Studio Max file and this Maya binary file currently do not have automatic image generation. However, even if a file type isn't supported by HelixDAM's automatic thumbnail and preview image generation, you can always add your own custom preview image at any time. And you can do this either through the HelixDAM web interface or through APIs as well, if you wanted to kind of into your pipeline through a published step. So from here, if we jump into our image asset view, we can start to take a peek at the different collaboration tools that are available to help your team work together with Helix Dam. So in this asset, we get a lot of information right away. Up top here, we can see all of the various search tags that have either been automatically generated or manually added by users. So beyond our image tag information at the top here, you can already see that this asset has a lot of activity going on already in the form of comments. So you can always come in here and just leave a general comment on an asset, or you can attach those comments directly to your image. So you can either do so in a pin style where you leave it in position, or if you'd like to do a bit more, you can always come in here and sketch and annotate directly on your image. You can either just grab a pen and start that off, or you can grab a, a shape if you needed to call something out specifically. We wanted to say that this area needs more light, we can leave that comment in place and we can also tag our colleagues. That way they'll get a notification that you've mentioned them in a comment. Now, if annotations still aren't enough to really get across what you're trying to say, you can always attach files to comments that can help illuminate what you're trying to say. I have to drop an asset in here and go ahead and add that comment. Not only do we have our annotation in place, which we can hide if we wanted to, but we do have our image that we can preview and see as well. So as you can see, there's many ways in which we can communicate with our team members about a specific revision of an asset and where things need to go to get to that finished product. Beyond the collaboration portion of Helix Dam and communicating with your team, there's also a lot more information we can gain about this asset directly from our interface. For instance, if we wanted to link the authoring scene that has generated this render, we can add a link so we can take it over to that asset in Helix Dam as well. And you can add any types of web links here. So this could be to a Jira task to integrate with our Jira integration, or you could be linking to other generative assets, such as other output styles, or even dependency assets, such as textures that have been used in the scene. We step over to our asset details section. We also get information about our asset as stored in Helix Core. We can see what change list this was introduced in, as well as the revision of this asset, as well as other custom metadata that you and your team can completely customize as to what fields you care about and the types of data that you're storing with those. Everything in the metadata section, along with the image tags, are completely searchable in Helix Dam to help you find your assets quickly for reuse. Now, as mentioned, we are viewing a specific revision of this asset. And since this is linked to our Helix Core server, we do also have the ability to go back in time and view all previous revisions of a specific asset. So here we can see a previous state of this scene where other annotations are present. And we can step through and view how our file has changed over time. So this really gives you that full view into not just your current state of your assets, but the entire history of an asset as it's been stored in Helix Core. So beyond our ability to annotate directly on image assets, there's another set of features that are reserved specifically for 3D assets and particularly FBX files. So if I were to jump back to my search window here and find an FBX asset and then jump into its associated project, you'll see that we are able to spin around and view our FBX directly in browser. Also, if any animations are present in FBX, those will be able to be playable as well as scrollable on our timeline here. Now, if your FBX has multiple animations and you'd like to view all of those, you actually open up your viewer setting here and change to all the FBX animations that are embedded within that file. So we can view our special attacks and really get a full view of what this FBX export has available to be used in your game or animation. Now, with playing animations, if we wanted to leave a comment on something specific, let's say this portion right here, we can go ahead and zoom in, find our perfect camera position, 
to really speak to what we wanted to say. And then when we come into our comment section, you'll notice in the 3D section, we do have this section here that has lock with timestamp and lock with viewer settings, as well as the position. So if I were to come in here and leave another comment and let's tag Chris, say, scary. Now, when Chris gets that notification and opens up his scene, he can go ahead and snap directly back to our position, as well as if he has a different animation playing, he can always snap back directly to that same animation, in the same camera position to really help communicate exactly what you're trying to say when you have 3D assets involved. This style of timestamp lock comments is also available on audio files and video files as well. But basically any asset that has a timeline that's viewable in Helix Dam, you'll be able to position your comment on that timeline. So that way everyone knows exactly what you're speaking to and what that comment relates to. Now, when an asset has been uploaded and all the comments have been addressed, the next thing to do would be to change the status of this asset over into one of our other workflows. So if you notice at the top here, we do have a status associated with every asset. Now, every asset that gets uploaded will initially be placed into the open category, just meaning that it hasn't been placed into review yet, that it's just a current state of the working file. Now, if I were to switch this over to in review, you'll notice that it's added this manage reviewers tab up top here. So in here, I can always search by name of who's involved in the project and assign them as a reviewer. So that way they'll be notified that they'll be added as a reviewer on specific assets. Now each project has the ability to set up default reviewers for files. So once that's set up by your project admin or your company admin, anytime you switch from open to in review, they'll automatically be notified. And one other thing to note about these statuses here is that these are completely customizable. So if your studio has a specific workflow that you like to follow with specific statuses, you can define those out and use those in place of these standard default options that are available. To change that, you would go to either the project settings, change which of the defined workflows are being used on this particular project. And if you are a company admin, you're the one who actually gets to define out those workflows. And that can be done through our company settings tab, where you can define out, as mentioned, the different workflows that are available to be used on individual projects, as well as the various metadata fields that can appear on assets. And these can be shown or hidden at any point on either a company level or a specific project level. And also this is where you can now access your various webhooks. Now, once you have your asset in the review state, you can also view the entire state of a project from the Kanban board where all of those same custom states will be reflected. And this is also a place where you can see whatever's in review, whatever files are open, and you can filter these columns down if you are looking for something specific. From this view, you can also move things and change the status here as well. So that way, if you're trying to get an overview of everything that's been approved, released, rejected, or whatever your custom workflow may be, um, you've got it all in one place for all of your assets at one time. Now, the one final section we need to go over in Helix Dam is the users tab here, where you can invite other users as team members on particular projects. Now, if you're either an administrator on this project or a company admin, you can always come in and invite users and other team members to participate on this project. So if I were to come in here and search a few, so let's go ahead and add Chase. And you can multi-select, so we can add a few. We can then see that our other users have been added and this will cause this project to show up in their My Projects tab. Also, this is where if you need to, you can switch folks over from being just a standard designer who don't have the ability to change project settings or company settings to be an administrator. So they can also invite users, set default reviewers and change those company settings and what metadata fields may be available. And with that, you should have a good base of knowledge to start using Helix Dam with your team and improve and accelerate your team's collaboration on the assets in your Helix Core library. So if you'd like to give Helix Dam a try, you can jump over to the Helix Dam product page on Perforce.com where there is an offer for a two week sandbox trial. So these sandbox environments are hosted on our servers. So you can upload assets, invite other team members to join your projects and test things out and see how that workflow goes for you. If you're looking for more of an integrated test with your actual Helix Core environment that you have set up, or if you'd like to set up a Helix Core environment and test out DAM together, contact us or your current account executive, 
to set up a proof of concept demo where we can set this up with a temporary environment on your hardware. So that way you can use your own production data in your testing environment to see how things flow together and how it can improve your workflows.